We are back at Galveston Island State Park, and today I'm going to set up the Alpha Antenna's Hextenna. Now, I'm unaware of why exactly they call this thing a Hextenna, because it's just basically a V dipole. But you can add another V dipole to it and make it a true Yagi with a front and a back element, with a, a two element Yagi. I don't have that today, I just have the single element, but it's very versatile. This is the tripod. We're going to set this up here in a second. This is a cool tripod, and I'm going to show you what that's about here in a minute. This right here is the center piece, a bit closer up there, and it's marked. It looks like it's pretty good CNC printed, professional 3D grade printing right here. This part goes on the bottom like that, and then you set an element here and an element here, these telescoping whips, which are right here, and you can extend the whips to certain distances depending on what band you're on. Or you can run a vertical from here and run a counterpoise from here. And with the counterpoise, it'll actually go up to the 440 megahertz, the 70 centimeter band. So you can run a two meter or a full 40 vertical antenna that uh, it, it tells you how to tune it for each of those bands. And then, but the dual whips that go in each of these will actually go up to the two meter band. So it tells you how to tune it all the way from 40 up to two meters. Two meters to 20 meters does not require a counterpoise, but once you get to 30 and 40 meters, you attach those counterpoise that comes with it to this antenna somewhere to it. it. It tells you where in the manual. I don't remember where right now. I think probably right here. Yeah, there's only one of these points on there. But I thought this would be a cool setup for the state park where I've done many activations this week. We've been here since Labor Day. I've done six POTA activations with uh, three or four different antennas and I've enjoyed all of them. So I'm enjoying setting this up and uh, showing you guys how it works. Let's go. This video is sponsored by Mezzi and Poloni Coax out of Italy. You can always save a 5% discount with the coupon code of KC5HWB at the link in the description below. Thank you, Mezzi and Ploni, for supporting this channel. The Potusflex Coax, which I'm going to use today, is not ready yet. It's a prototype right now. They are making it for mass production, but I wanted to get it in a video so that you guys could look at it. This will be the third or fourth video I've used with it, and people keep asking, when is it going to be available? Later in 2023 is the only thing I know right now, but check the link in the description below for everything else they have. And once again, thank you MMP for supporting this video. All right, so this is the tripod that they sent me. Everything today that we're gonna talk about in the video was sent to me by Alpha Antennas. Caught up with them at Dayton Hamvention of 2023. And uh, I've talked to them in the past about doing some stuff and they, they sent me this antenna and one other, which you'll probably see later in a later video. But this is the one that I was really interested in, just my own personal preference. This tripod is cool. Okay, so first of all, it has these clawed feet like eagle claw type feet, which digs into the sand or the ground, sand in, in today's application where we're at, sand or the ground. And then they have these step down pieces on them where you put your foot on there and kind of push it in the ground a little bit. And then they're adjustable by pulling that out and going that far with it, just like that, pushing that back down again. So that extends your tripod so that it's a little bit higher. One thing I think is a little bit strange is the tripod has no stopping point. So you can extend it all the way out like that to where the base of the tripod sits lower on the ground, or you can bring the legs in together to where the base of the tripod sits up higher on the ground. But there's no locking mechanism for this hinge right here. I thought that was a little bit strange, but once these things are dug into the ground, it probably won't matter. So we're gonna find that out here in a second. It's got this hanging point where you can hang like a, some sort of, of weight, sandbag, something to guy the tripod down on the ground and weight it down so that it doesn't blow over in the wind. We have a good breeze coming off of the Gulf of Mexico right there right now, so that's going to be a thing. And then this part right here, this is just your standard threaded, I always forget the number on that, seven and three quarter, I, that's probably wrong. I always forget the number on this. It's your standard threaded mount for ham sticks and for these types of antennas right here, and of course for the hub that I just showed you a minute ago. So we're gonna put that hub on and put it all together and see what it looks like. While putting this thing together, here's one element on it. Number one, the tripod is standing on its own with one element extended all the way out. And you know, it's got some bend to it, okay. Makes it more of like an actual horizontal dipole, no problem there. You adjust these both of these elements 
according to what band you're going to be on. And it's it's 16 foot, 11 and a half inches. <laughs> so pretty much 17 foot for the 20 meter band, according to the manual. But as I was undoing these, here's what I noticed, okay? This one here is the MFJ stainless steel whip that I've been using for a couple of years now. Using it down here on the ocean in the salt air, it has actually started to rust. I left it outside one time, not thinking about it much because it is, quote, stainless steel. It's not supposed to do that. But there's different grades and different levels of stainless steel. Okay, Alpha claims theirs is the higher grade because I was talking to him about this at Dayton Hamvention of 2023. So time will tell how well it does or doesn't stand up, although I don't plan to leave it outside. The main reason I wanted to show you this right here is because of this. So this is the top section of the Alpha antenna on the right, and this is the top, this is the beginning of the top section of the MFJ antenna on the left. The top section of the MFJ antenna, or the MFJ whip, I should say, is much thinner than the top section. This doesn't pull, this looks like it might pull out here, but it doesn't. I put a pair of pliers on it, gave it a good nudge, didn't want to break it, but that is the top section right there. It's this thick compared to this thin on the MFJ. So what does that mean? Well, possibly it means nothing, but probably it means that the alpha antenna is just going to be more sturdy, hold up better in wind, and be and heavier. It's heavier. Most likely you're not gonna carry a stainless steel telescoping whip that extends to 17 plus feet in a backpack if you're doing soda. And that's okay, it's not really what it's made for. Just a better overall quality, heavier duty, sturdier build than the MFJ version. And the MFJ version, I don't have my Chameleon 17, my, my Cha 17 foot whip with me here today, but I've compared it to the MFJ and it's very similar. So I would suspect that the Alpha is even a lot beefier and thicker and heavier duty than even the Chameleon version of this same whip. So just something I noticed while putting this together, wanted to point that out in the video. All right, so we've got it set up right here in the back. It is holding its own. It's got a breeze coming on off the Gulf, the Gulf of Mexico right there, but there's this big ridge between where I'm at right now and the actual beach, which is right there. This is probably where we're gonna, we're, we're gonna be set up for winter fuel day. See, there's a pavilion right there, another one right there, another one right there. I think there might be some more stuff down there. I'm not sure though. But during January, these don't get a lot of activity for obvious reasons. During the summer, they're filled up. Today is Friday, and I suspect by this evening, definitely tomorrow, this whole place will be filled up. But think about renting one of those pavilions for winter field day. More to come on that later. So we've got the antenna set up there. Breeze is coming off the ocean. I don't have it guide down, tied down, anything like that. It's holding its own. And I could move the legs a little bit farther out and bring the center of gravity down if I wanted to. I wanted to get it up. Honestly, the one disappointing thing about this tripod to me is that it doesn't go up any higher than that. I would like it if there was a center mast in it that would extend up a little bit that you could raise the antenna up even that much higher. But this is how it's built. This is how we're gonna use it today. So, okay, there we go. This center piece right here comes all the way down to right there and it's clamped, so we're good there. Staked, or not staked, but you know, eagle claw footed into the ground, however you wanna say that. Potaflex coax going right here, going into the feed there. If I was gonna run a counterpoise for 40 or 30, I would do it off of there, or if I was gonna run a vertical from here, I'd run the counterpoise off of there. And it comes with those counterpoise wires, or at least the kit they sent me did. So, and there they are, out all the way, about 17 foot each, and a little, a little uh, transparency here, just because I like to be honest when I can. <laughs> I like to always be honest, quite frankly. I didn't bring a tape measure with me, I should have. I should buy a tape measure and keep it in my antenna bag. It's a great uh, piece of kit to keep in your antenna bag, but I don't have one with me today. So the real reason I got out the MFJ telescoping whip is because I know it's 17 feet and I wanted to measure it next to these. These are like this much shorter. I think they call it 17 feet. I think it's closer to like 17, two or four inches for the MFJ version. And these are a touch shorter than that when they're extended out all the way. Now, again, the instructions say for 20 meters to extend them out 16 foot, 11 and a half inches. So that should be right about correct. So right now we're gonna go look at the trusty Rig Expert Stick Pro meter and see what it says. I'm gonna go multi and see what it reads at right there. So it's gonna scan the antenna 1.9 at 14. Uh, 379. So that's a little bit above the amateur radio band, one of two, it says. It's 1.1 1 
at 438, 70 centimeters. Hey, guess what? I could use this on my um, all-star hotspot right now, which is uh, running 437.55. There we go. Let's hook up the all-star to it and see what's in it. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. So, okay, let's get a little bit deeper menu here, and I'm going to go into single 1.96 at 14350. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's bring it down. Actually, I want to see the dip. Okay, let's go in. Let's go back out here and go to ham. Change band. There we go. 20 meters. Okay, so it's a one, 2.1. Let's see. All right, let's figure this out real quick. So what we did was it proved to be too short. It was extended all the way, and it was still too short because it was dipping around the 1.4, 1 1.5 SWR at 14.7 ish. Okay. So when I said earlier about the counterpoise connecting here, there is a counterpoise for this that's used with the vertical. Additionally to that, there's two extra wires that are right here with these alligator clamps and ground stakes. There's a ground stake. I took it off of here to, to save the weight. Okay, they're underneath it right now. And you add these elements to the end of the, what they call the corona ball, which is the end of the antenna that we, we looked at a minute ago. You add those elements for the 30 and 40 meter band, and I guess you just let them you stake them to the ground if you know, adjust them accordingly and that kind of thing. Since the antenna was too short, I added these for 20 meters, which I shouldn't have to do according to the manual. Now, there's a lot of factors that can contribute that. The very, very, very dry ground here, the fact that we're zero feet, well, maybe like three feet above sea level, the elevation is going to be a factor, the weather, the heat is going to be a factor. So it was just barely too short. In my opinion, these whips should extend maybe one other section, and then we should be able to, to uh, shorten them down, get a little bit better tune on them without having to add the uh, extended um, whips there. But be that as it may, what I did was I added those to both sections, which that's going to make it really long. In fact, it did. It made it long. It made the dip around 13.7. So it dropped it a good one megahertz. It was 14.7 without the extensions and was 13.7 the dip was at 13.7 with the extensions. So I shortened the section. There's 10 sections in each of the telescoping whips. So after adding the wire to the end, I shortened it by one, and now we've got a dip, a really good dip at 14.225 of like 1.12 1 to 1. And you can't ask for better than that. So that should be very resonant on 20 meters. Somebody's over there watching me. They're like, what is this guy doing with this big honking monstrosity inside the park right now, but it's okay. I mean, I, I'm used to that. SWR is good, and uh, I'm going to tighten that down and make sure that it's uh, doing what it needs to be doing, and uh, we're going to get on the air. CQ, CQ, CQ Parks on the air, CQ Parks on the air, Kilo Charlie 5 Hotel Whiskey Bravo, calling CQ Parks on the air from Galveston Island State Park, Kilo 3013, calling CQ Poda and listening. Whiskey 6, Bravo Kilowatt Mike, uh, about a 5x4. Five by four. Copy the 4-3 in California. Uh, I'll take, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's a good deal. I don't think uh, I have it pointed towards you right now, but uh, you're in there and I got you in the logbook. Thanks for the contact. All right, I'll run to you there at the end. Uh, I'll let you get back to phone. CQ, thanks for the contact. Roger, Roger, 73. CQ, CQ, CQ Parks on the air. CQ Parks on the air. Kilo Charlie 5 Hotel Whiskey Bravo. Calling CQ Parks on the air from Galveston Island State Park. Kilo 3013. Calling CQ Poda and listening. November Alpha 2 Bravo and a 2B. November Alpha 2 Bravo. Great signal. 5-9 into Kilo 3013. Oh, very good. Thank you, Jay. All right, uh, somebody was uh, doubling with you. Come back again. I mean, you got a good signal, but so did that other guy. Come back again, NA2B. Okay, Jason, I have you at a 59 here in Tampa Bay. 59, Tampa Bay, Foxtrot, Lima, QSL. QSL, QSL, copy the 5-9 in Tampa Bay. Appreciate you being out there, man. Sounding great today. Very good, 7-3. 73, uh, QRZ. Kilo 4, Tango, November Hotel. Kilo 4, Tango, November Hotel, 5-9. Roger, Roger, you're five nine. Thanks for another one, Jason. Roger, Roger. Thanks for getting the logbook again, man. Good to work you. 73. QRZ, Kilo Charlie 5, Hotel Whiskey Bravo. Parks in the air. Uh, the Park to Park station. Park to Park, come back. Uh, 
Okay, Kilo uh, Kilo Juliet Four Alpha Delta Victor. I copy your seven eight three nine. You're about a five two five two into park number Kilo three zero one three. Thank you very much for the five and two. I copy Kilo three zero one three. I have you five and three fifty three here. Roger, roger. Okay, sounds good. Got you in the logbook. Thanks for the park to park and good luck. QRZ, Kilo Charlie 5, Hotel Whiskey Bravo, parks in the air. November 8, Echo, Yankee Foxtrot. November 8, Echo, Yankee Foxtrot, 5x5. Five five. And you're 5-5 five five South Florida, thank you. Got the 5-5 five five in South Florida, 73, thanks for the contact. QRZ? QRZ from Kilo Charlie 5, Hotel Whiskey Bravo, parks in the air. Kilo Delta 9 Delta Zulu Tango. What's up, Matthew? Uh, 5-5 five, five into the park today. Roger, Roger. 73. Good to work you again from Wisconsin, Matthew. Thanks for being out there so often. Uh, uh, 73. All right, you know what I want to do right now? I'm going to turn the antenna. Just for the heck of it. It's a single dipole. Maybe it doesn't matter, but I'm going to do it anyway because I can. I mean, why not? To the touch that it coax is not hot at all. I was wondering if it would be. Sitting out here in the sun and got RF pumping through it. You never know. All right, let's see if that makes any difference at all. Kilo Charlie 5, Hotel Whiskey Bravo. Calling CQ Parks on the air from Galveston Island State Park, Kilo 3013. Calling CQ Pota and listening. Whiskey 4, Delta Unicorn. Kilo Park Zero, Juliet. The Whiskey 4 Delta Station? Whiskey 4 Delta Uniform Quebec over. Whiskey 4 Delta Uniform Quebec 5-9. Uh, 5-9 five nine. Five nine in Atlanta, Georgia over. Copy the 5-9 in Atlanta. Got you in the logbook. 73, man. Thanks for the contact. 73 is W4DUQ. QRZ, Kilo Charlie 5, Hotel Whiskey Bravo Parks in the air. Is there a Whiskey 1 station? Uh, QRZ, Kilo Charlie 5, Hotel Whiskey Bravo, parks in the air. Kilo Fox Zero, Juliet Oscar Echo. Kilo Fox Zero, Juliet Oscar Echo, 5-9. QSL, you are 5-7 in Missouri, Mike Oscar. Copy the 5-7 in Missouri, Mike Oscar. Uh, thanks for being out there, 73. QRZ, Kilo Charlie 5, Hotel Whiskey Bravo, parks in the air. The Kilo Echo 2 station. The Kilo Echo 2 station. Come back again. Kilo Echo 2 Alpha Sierra November. I think it was 3 by 3 33 in the Kilo 3013. All right, I'll copy the 5 6 in New York. Uh, thanks for the contact, 73. November 6, Hotel Charlie. November 6, Hotel Charlie, 5-9. Roger, also 5-9, Southern California. Uh, appreciate the 5-9 in Southern California, 73. Thanks for the contact. QRZ, Kilo Charlie 5, Hotel Whiskey Bravo, parks in the air. Uh, I got a 5. I've been getting 5-2s and 5-4s in California. I got a 5-9 after turning the antenna just then. Propagation, maybe turning the antenna. You never can tell. Maybe it helped, maybe it didn't. QRZ, Kilo Charlie 5, Hotel Whiskey Bravo Parks in the Air. Whiskey Delta 4, Kilo Foxtrot Tango. Whiskey Delta 4, Kilo Foxtrot Tango, 5 9. Uh, you're a 5 9, a 59 in South Carolina, Sierra Charlie. Copy the 5-9 in South Carolina, 73, and thanks for the contact today. All right, that worked out well. I got like 66 contacts in just under an hour. Worked out very well. Changing the ro the, ro the orientation of the antenna didn't really seem to do anything. I didn't think it would, but wanted to try it because it was easy to do. If I had a two-element beam on there, it would be much more directional than it is now. Check the links in the description below for everything we talked about today. And special thanks to both Alpha Antenna for sending me this antenna and for Mezzi and Plomy Coax for sponsoring this video.